Hi. So, some more unfortunate news in this hobby. On Wednesday, January 24th, Oda Keeves announced that they were shutting down, and as a result, KBM will also be going down with it. It's quite unfortunate because I was really hoping that KBM could become another big manufacturer for cheaper sets, but due to some internal issues related to the departure of a co-owner, they will no longer be able to continue to stay in business. Details are kind of murky and one-sided, so it's not exactly clear whose fault it is. But what is clear is that due to this departure, Ota Keeps no longer has the finances to continue operating. Regarding KBM projects, KBM Ferry has completed production and KBM Golden Locket will apparently be finished, so Ota Keeps says that these sets will be delivered. But for KBM 100 Acres, that set is now in limbo. The keycap designers are trying to rescue this set and work with other vendors to try to complete the project, but if you're not confident in this endeavor, it might be best to issue a chargeback. It could impact your ability to get a set if a rescue effort is successfully put together, but if you want a more guaranteed result or wish to wash your hands clean of the situation, I totally get that. For some of the other projects that Otakis was running, many of those projects are also in limbo. The post says that they plan on using asset sales to complete DMK Jade and MW Ashente, and then shift the project to other vendors, but at this point, I would have extreme doubts that they would be able to fulfill these sets. I'm not clear about the other sets and projects that they ran, but if you are a participant of DMK Arrogant Cat, I would issue your chargeback now if you didn't get your money back as KP Republic had posted in their Discord that the set was cancelled due to it failing to meet MOQ. What makes me extra angry about the situation is how incompetent Ota Keeb seems to be in this whole situation. If the departure of one person paralyzes the whole company, then what were the other people doing? How were there not any safeguards at all to make sure that the company could continue operating in the event that someone had to leave, and what exactly happened to the point where this person is seeking more than half a mil in compensation for their departure? Furthermore, Ota Keeps knew that they were in a whole lot of trouble, but they continued to downplay the whole situation and continued to host new group buys such as MV Synth. I know that to many of you, I may be the group buy guy or at least someone who provides group buy information, but if you can help yourself, I would try to just buy in-stock items. There are plenty of trusted vendors in the hobby with great in-stock offerings, so if you want to protect yourself from some potential heartache, that's the way to go. I will still continue to make these videos, but honestly, I'm just so sick and tired of having to report these irresponsible vendors video after video and watch folks get shafted by these vendors' stupid decisions. I will probably continue to put out these videos since there are still many cool projects and good vendors in this hobby. But just like how many of you must feel as well, I'm getting real tired of group buys. Again, apologies about the whole situation.
KKB Moon Rabbit is a really cute set inspired by the popular white rabbit milk candy that you might have seen in some Asian supermarkets. The set does give me GMK soya milk vibes since both sets use red, white, blue, and cream for the colors, as well as the Tangjie sub legends, but the sets do look very different, and I like them for different reasons. The novelties are very on point for the theme, and I do think that they look pretty nice and kind of retro, just like the packaging for the candy. I think that the stripe keys are a nice touch and does help drive home the theme very well. If you want even more color for your set, there is a red stripe kit that you can buy which allows you to replace the num row with red keycaps. It's a nice look, but one that I don't think is necessary unless you have a specific design in mind. Unfortunately for KKB Moon Rabbit, it does appear that the language support isn't its strong suit. I know that there are a decent number of users who require an international kit, but unfortunately for the most part, they don't tend to sell well, so I can understand why they decided not to have one for this set. If that's a deal breaker for you, then it is what it is. But if you're someone who doesn't need that language support and wants something that looks nice and is a bit of a throwback, I would definitely check out KKB Moon Rabbit. Osumi has been doing really well and releasing some really nice sets ever since they joined the hobby as a vendor and designer. They've been very customer focused and even decided to change up their sales model from group buy to in stock after one experience where they had some delays that had caused customer frustration. It didn't even come close to the delays that some GMK sets experience, but it was definitely a welcome gesture and one that's proven to be the right decision with a string of failures and disappointments with other vendors. Back to the sets themselves, Osumi Year the Dragon is the newest addition to Osumi's Lunar New Year line, and like its predecessors, it will be a limited edition run. I do like the colors chosen and the novelties are pretty cute, though I don't know if it's just me, but some of the novelties featuring the chibi dragon kind of look more like a cow or teddy bear to me. It's still very cute, but it's just an intrusive thought that I haven't been able to shake off. These sets are limited since Osumi doesn't do a rerun, and next year there'll be another set which will probably be for the snake. The other set that's going live soon is Osumi Lilac Dreams, a set inspired by lilacs. It does give me GMK Lavender vibes not only because of the colors, but also the flower theme, but it's been quote unquote cozyified by the Osumi design language. Even though I do have GMK Lavender already, I do really like this set and I plan on picking one up. Osumi Lilac Dreams will also have a version featuring Osumi's special marshmallow profile. The marshmallow profile features a uniform height and more rounded corners. It still uses Osumi's thin legends, but the legends are now centered, and the modifier keys are replaced with icons rather than text. I don't think that looks bad, and I definitely see the appeal, but it's definitely a matter of preference. The marshmallow profile does come in at a slight premium of $5, so it's not that bad, but unless you just really like how they look, or want to try the profile, the regular Osumi Lilac Dreams is probably the one to go for. I'm really excited for this upcoming sale, and I am thinking about picking up both sets. However, if I were limited to just one set, I'd probably go with Osumi Lilac Dreams just because I really like how the colors came out. But if you're someone who's a collector or a sucker for limited edition items, Osumi Year of the Dragon is probably the better set for you. The DR70F is a budget 70% keyboard with prices that rival the TKD Cycle 7. While it might not have as many features as the Cycle 7, the DR70F is still a nice looking keyboard and I think it's definitely good value for what it's offering. It allows the user to choose between two different mounting styles, gasket mount or sandwich mount, and also offers wired or Bluetooth connection. It has valve support for the wired PCB and LDN for the Bluetooth PCB and comes with a carrying case which is always a welcome addition. The in-stock sale for this keyboard actually started back on January 23rd with a limited number of units and color options, so I've included the group by date for this video where there won't be a cap on units, and there will be more colors to choose from. Overall, I think that the DR70F is a solid keyboard, and if you've been looking for something a bit cheaper, it's definitely one to consider. The Freya is a keyboard that's been in development for a long time now by Wucha Studios, but it will finally go up for sale on February 6th. It features a slider on the left hand side as well as a massive knob that also houses a touchscreen on the top right corner. It's definitely something that I've never seen before and makes it quite unique, though maybe a little polarizing. If you're someone who's not a big fan of that look, you're in luck, as there are options to replace the slider with macro keys and the knob with a cluster of four keys, so you can get something that looks a bit more low-key. 
Do keep in mind though that the slider or macro keys are only available on the Freya Ultra Edition. So if you aren't a fan of the extra keys or sliders on the left hand side, you can get the regular Freya version that just features the interchangeable knob. There are also a lot of nice features that come with this board, such as a badge that can be switched out, multiple connectivity options, as well as the pogo pin structure for connecting the daughter board and PCB, which makes it a little more convenient. Tech features aside, I do think that the board itself looks well designed, and I really like the side profile. The bottom of the board does look really nice with the weight, and I feel like it's not too over the top. There will be two collaboration editions available for sale, the Valhalla edition and the Jaykeed edition. Both of these versions do look quite nice and have their little customizations, but they do come at an extra cost. If you are interested in these special editions, but aren't too sure because of the price, I would wait for the product page to be available to see if you can try to customize a Freya Ultra version to make something kind of similar, and then compare the prices in order to make your decision on which version you like best. The one thing that I'm not too sure about for this keyboard is the customization for the touchscreen, since you'll have to do that via the Wucha Studio smartphone app. I tried using it before when I was sent the Zoom 98 for review, and at that time, the app definitely felt like it was still in beta. However, I have heard that there have been updates since, and it's something that they're dedicated to working on, so maybe it's not the biggest concern. Overall, I think that the Freya is a really cool looking board, and one that I think will sell quite well. The price does stretch from $329 all the way up to $490, meaning that there are cheaper versions for those who aren't looking to break the bank, and more expensive versions for people who want more features or exclusivity. I'm probably going to pick one up for myself in the end, though I guess we'll see when the product pages go live.